Hello everyone, my name is Gabriela Mera and it is my great pleasure to be here with you and share some insights into the molecular design of uh, low dimensional nanocarbon based ceramic composites. As you know, we are living a time of changes and it's up to us now to decide on which part of the road we want to walk. And for a green future, in my opinion, solutions can be found on the area of nanocarbon based composites. And why I'm saying that, so green and sustainable solutions uh, are actually found by nanocarbons, for example, for energy storage, in case of wind and solar energy, for energy conversion, as well as thermal management. So that means the carbon is one of the most versatile element in order to design this kind of materials for uh, so many multifunctional um, applications. And in order to convince you about that, I divide my talk in several parts. So I will start with a short introduction on the um, science of nanocarbons. And then I will uh, explain you which is our material uh, or molecular approach in order to design nanocarbon based uh, materials. First method I will mention in this talk is the single source carbon rich precursor approach where a polymer, so a single source precursor is pyrolyzed to ceramics and the carbon phase can be found as in form of carbon nanodomains, as well as recently we found out that uh, depending on the metrics, we can also design one dimensional nanocarbon based ceramic composites. And the second approach I will mention today is the hybrid precursor approach, where the nanocarbon phase on different dimensionalities, like you can see zero dimension or two dimensional uh, nanocarbon can be incorporated directly in the molecular structure of the polymers. And of course, I will end up my talk with conclusions. Now, if we are looking now to the nanocarbon road, like I'm naming, I just pick up a few examples of uh, confined nanocarbons or so low dimensional nanocarbons. And we can find here three dimensional multilayer graphene, so not graphite, two dimensional graphene, one dimensional carbon nanotubes as single and multi world nanotubes, as well as a very exciting class of uh, materials, so the zero dimensional nanocarbons represented by the ESP3 hybridized nanodiamond of five nanometer particle size and the analog ESP2 hybridized carbon nanoonium, as well as some mixture of both of them. So where we have this core shell structure composed of core of nanodiamond, a shell of fullerens and named Bucky nanodiamond. And like you have seen here on this slide, uh, before, so the nanocarbons can have fascinating nanostructures. And not only that, they are showing unique properties and functionalities. Uh, these properties can be tuned. So electrical conductivity, for example, or porosity or the specific surface area, the thermal and chemical stability. And very important is that these nanocarbons can be incorporated within the metrics, so some ceramic metrics, and then uh, we can develop an exciting class of smart materials. And uh, I named this smart because they are showing multifunctional properties. So that means they can have two or more primary functions in a simultaneous matter or subventional matter. So that means they can achieve multifunctions in the same time. The dimension can be reduce, so that means this driving to the smaller is available for these materials. And if these nanocarbons are also covalently incorporated um, uh, and bonded to the matrix, then we are achieving excellent dispersion and the agglomeration of nanocarbons is avoided. So now, how can we do that? Generally, we know that polymer-derived ceramic route it represents the thermal decomposition in an inert or reactive atmosphere of a polymer to ceramic. And you can see on this slide, on the left-hand side, we have the polysiloxane transformed to silicon oxycarbide. 
and on the center side, so you, we have the polystylosines transformed to the silicon carbonitrate ceramics. Both of them, they have a mixed bond structure where silicon is bonded to the carbon and to the functional life groups, so oxygen or nitrogen, in the same time. Both of them, they are also composed of free carbon phases, so multi-layer graphene. And if we are looking to these structures, even if they are looking like single phase, ceramics, uh, they are actually heterogeneous and nanoscale. So that means they are composed of nanodomains. And these nanodomains, they are one to three nanometer in size. And therefore we can also name these ceramics as intrinsic nanocomposites. Very exciting is to design also ceramic materials from polymer and uh, these ceramics to have also non-mixed bond structure. And a classical example is, are the polycyl carbodiamides, where by the thermal decomposition in uh, inert atmosphere, we can create two kinds of nanodomains, so silicon nitride and carbon nanodomains by this simple thermal process. And now the question is, can we do the same starting from polycyloxanes? And the answer is yes. So some years ago, Professor Narizawa was publishing the thermal decomposition of polycyloxanes in CO2 atmosphere to create silica and carbon um, nanocomposites. Now, there is an issue here because we need a toxic atmosphere instead of an inert atmosphere to, to get this non-mixed bond structure. And uh, we recently found out that if we are changing the molecular structure of this uh, precursors in such a way to avoid any kind of direct bonding in between silicon and the functional group, uh, in the carbon sorry group, then we can create in the inert atmosphere by the thermal decomposition, same temperature, we can create this non-mixed bond structure also in the ceramics. So that means if we are looking now to the next slide, we have this structure, we have, for example, silicon and the only only uh, having oxygen or uh, amines groups, so bonded directly at silicon, and no carbon-silicon direct bonding. And if we are pyrolyzing this, we will create this uh, phase-separated SOAR or non-mixed bond uh, structure in the ceramic. Interesting is that we have here the opportunity not only to incorporate uh, different kinds of uh, carbon containing groups. So like polyaromatics, if we are looking forward to create some carbon rich materials, but we also can incorporate some, some uh, nanocarbons directly here, also through this bridge, um, uh, to this bridge of functional groups like oxygen and amines at silicon. And by changing this molecular structure in such a way, we can tune a lot of properties. First of all, in the polymeric state, like solubility, so, uh, uh, stability, optoelectronic properties, rheology, and then also in the ceramic state, like thermal stability against decomposition and crystallization, uh, the nano and the microstructure and the sizes of these nanodomains created by, uh, by the decomposition, ceramic yield, carbon content, density, as well as optoelectronic properties and porosity. We also have the freedom to uh, use different kinds of uh, synthesis routes for these uh, precursors, or also to have different kinds of functional end groups uh, in order to tune these properties. Moreover, you have seen on the slide before that also the atmosphere of thermal decomposition plays a very important role on the final structure and properties of the ceramics. And in this way, we can create uh, functional and structural uh, uh, structural properties for this nanocarbon-based ceramic composites. And now let's see uh, how can we do that. So I just pick up an example. So let's let's stay now on oxygen as functional group. So that means we have polyorganosiloxanes, and we can exchange this set. So the carbon phase by different kinds of polyaromatics. And this is an example published. Uh, recently with a group of Professor Kroll, where we incorporated biphenyl in the structure of uh, polysiloxane. 
same we can do with uh, zero dimensional nanocarbon like nano diamond here or also two dimensional graphene oxide see so here so that means we can also incorporate all kinds of nanocarbons in the structure of this polyorganosiloxane and um, if we are doing that so is this exactly this single source um, carbon rich precursor approach in the first example so where we have this polyaromatics so the, the root one, like I name it. So that means we have just molecular carbons or, or organic groups of carbon, which can create this carbon nanodomains of one to three nanometer in size, or they can also create elongated one dimensional uh, carbon nanotubes or nanoscrolls. And the general route for that, so everyone knows, uh, because we are on the polymer derived ceramic project here. So if we are looking now to this uh, transformation process of, uh, so the PDC root, uh, what happened with the carbon? Now we have small molecules at the beginning, like you have seen this biphenyl. Uh, during the cross-linking, this biphenyl can transform to molecular graphene or PACs, so polyaromatic hydrocarbons with dimension less than five nanometer. And also, if we are increasing the temperature or we are also uh, doing this process in the same time, so cross-linking and processing, then we can also go direction nanographene, so dimension up to 500 nanometer. And then during the pyrolysis, we can also reach the macrographene phase, so dimension more than 500 nanometer. And how this uh, graphene phase is uh, getting organized depends on the metrics, on the silicon metrics, like you can see here on this window, and as well as the interfacial bonding. So that means the bonding in between the carbon phase and the silicon phase. So we can have stacking. So that means we are ending up with multi, multi layer graphene phase. We have rolling processes, and then we can create CNTs or we can have wrapping processes and then we are creating fullerene-like carbon. And uh, this example, you can see here, if we are pyrolyzing the single source precursor, having the biphenyl, which is not bonded directly at silicon, then we can create multi-wall carbon nanotubes, so defective structures of, uh, within the silica pore. So that means we have confinement within the silica uh, mesoporal structure. Now, uh, this is also very important to mention, we are not using any kind of metal catalyst. So that means silica is actually playing the role of catalyst in this process. And then we can create very pure uh, silica nanotubes, uh, nanocomposites. The second route, if we are now incorporating nanocarbons directly in the structure of, uh, of the polymer precursor, so is this hybrid precursor approach. And then you can see here, we can create nanocomposites with a carbon phase in form of nanoscrolls of uh, carbon nanoonions, uh, graphene uh, layers. And then you can see here for nanodiamonds, for example, we have the proof that these nanodiamonds are really nicely dispersed within the matrix. So that means we have the single digit nanodiamonds in the silica phase. And this is one example. So the nano diamond is a commercial source. So we are uh, buying this nano diamond. We are then doing chemical functionalization on the surface. So nano diamond has the advantage to have a very rich surface chemistry. And uh, what happened with the nano diamond if we are just uh, pyrolyzing it uh, in the inert atmosphere or in a vacuum? He, uh, so these nano diamonds can transform to different uh, sorts of, uh, of uh, zero dimension nanocarbon, like for example, at 1500 degrees C, we can achieve Bucky nanodiamonds, so having core shell structure with sp2, sp3 hybridization. And then at higher temperature, higher than 1700 degrees C, we can also uh, achieve the onion like carbon phase, so pure sp2 multi layer fullerene structures. And this kind of zero dimension nanocarbons, each of them can be chemically functionalized can be reacted by a very simple sol gel process and then can be um, incorporated by covalent bonding within the structure of different polymers. This is an example of polysiloxane, but we can also do the same with uh, 
other polymers. So you can see on the left hand side, we have the oxide materials like uh, silica on the upper part, cisescuoxane uh, on, the, on the bottom part. And on the right hand side, you can see that also we can do the same, um, the same um, chemical um, yeah, synthesis for the non-oxide material like uh, uh, silicon diamide as well as cisescuoxane um, precursors. Now, what else can we do? We can really confine this not only in the pores, like we have seen before, but we can also confine this uh, within the silica shells and create some nanoparticles. And again, it's a very simple synthesis. So if we have chemically functionalized nanodiamond, for example, we can do Stöber soldier synthesis and create these core shell nanoparticles. And here we can talk about a lot about the influence of the interfaces and the, uh, about the bo covalent bondings at the interface and about the confinement type. So if we are comparing with the composites I have shown you on the slide before. Okay, and now let's see what we are doing with this chemi uh, chemistry, so with the molecular design. So first of all, by the molecular design, we can choose which kind of dimensionality we want for the carbon as well as which kind of hybridization we need. Secondly, we are then designing and uh, tuning the interface bonding as well as the interface volume. We can choose uh, polymers, so polymer metrics with different branching and different, and then we can also choose the confinement type for this uh, for this uh, nanocarbon within the pores or within the uh, within the shells then we are achieving different kinds of nanostructures and of course also different kinds of properties, different kinds of energetics, and thus then we can design materials for a lot of applications. On this slide you can see a, just a very short list of, uh, of uh, properties, of tunable properties we are looking for for these materials like electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, or dielectric properties, or for example, um, uh, CO2 capture for these materials as well as photoluminescence. So there's, it's a very short list. So that means there is a lot of uh, work to do, but this is just the beginning for this, um, for this research. And um, I will finalize this short uh, overview, the short introduction on the chemical design by, uh, by uh, concluding that we can achieve different kinds of nanocarbons within the ceramic matrix, different kinds of dimensionality from zero dimension nanocarbon of different hybridization to the one dimensional nanocarbon and two dimensional uh, nanocarbon. We can use different kinds of uh, metrics, so silicon metrics from oxide metrics or non-oxide metrics, and we can then have a very high influence on the interface so to create a strong interface and a large volume of interface, we have a synergistic effect in between these two phases, so carbon and silicon matrix, and uh, what I didn't present today actually, and we do not have any kind of reactions in between the phases. And uh, in this way, we can then design multifunctional nanocomposites with tunable properties. I will end up with this slide and I want to acknowledge a lot of uh, collaboration partners from all around the world, especially Professor Navroski here, Professor Kroll, and um, also the senior researchers from uh, TU Darmstadt and my former and current students, which were actually working on this on these projects. And I would like to thank you for your kind attention and I will be glad to answer your questions. Thank you so much.